We can also use conditional formatting to pretty much control any value where you see an X2 button next to the value. So if we were to pick on the name field in our data report and go to format field, any field with an X2 next to it, like there, like there, like there, can all be controlled through a formula. Now, unlike the straightforward tick box, which has an easy formula where effectively you just put the criteria, these require a little bit more, I was going to say programming, but they require a little bit more knowledge. So if I want to control the color, for example, of my first name, where we go into the formula, now you can see here there are some comments that allow you to figure out what the correct colors are to use because there are predefined constants in Chris reports for the colors, CR white, CR aqua, CR fuchsia, CR blue, etc. So if we want our name to go blue, we need a criteria. But we're also going to need to use an if because there are now different values. It's not just a matter of true or false. It's okay. If it's this true, what do I want to happen? So we need to introduce if. So if then my condition, or well, let's concentrate on the net profit this time. So I want to look at the value of the net profit. So if the net profit is greater than 5,000, then what color would I like the font color to change? Because that's what I'm controlling here. Look at the title bar the whole time so you know what values you are controlling. So I'm controlling the font color. I'd like it to go blue. So it's CR blue. However, I need to look at the else because what happens if it's not more than 5,000? Well, I'd like it to go CR black. So there's lots of keywords in here. If then CR blue, else and CR black. Let's do a little X2 on that. Fine, no errors, save and close. We then see we have X2 in red at the 45 degree angle. Okay, and our formatting condition takes effect. So we have blue text for those people whose net profit is greater than 5,000. Right click, format field, font, back into the same formula. What about a double criteria here? Okay, it's greater than 5,000, but if it's greater than 7,000, we want it to change color again. So if it's greater than 5,000, then what we really need to do here is effectively embed another if. I'm just going to use open and close brackets to keep that within itself. If net profit greater than 7,000, then CR red. Obviously the tabbing in here is not a requirement for it to work, just makes it a little easier to read. Else CR blue. So we have an embedded if. If the net profit is greater than 5,000, then it goes into this set of brackets, where if the net profit is greater than 7,000, then it goes CR red, else it goes CR blue. We come out of that part of the if, into the else and then it's CR black. So we should see anything over 7,000 is red, anything between effectively 5,000 and 7,000 is blue, everything else is black. Check, no errors found, save and close. Okay, and there we see the ones over 7,000 go red and then the others go blue. So that's very similar to the multi-level that you can do in the highlighting expert. You just gotta be a little bit careful about your embedded ifs. Now, there's nothing to stop you having ifs embedded inside ifs. And it doesn't always need these open and close brackets. I just tend to use those to make it easier, A, to read and to follow the logic of where that if falls. So that if effectively is the then part of that outer if. If I were to put another if inside here, perhaps trying to trigger over 9,000, I would also do the open and close brackets just to make it easier for me to follow that logic. So this is using conditional formatting to control items that are not simply tick boxes. And we can use it as we've done there for the color. We could use it on the font. You could change the typeface based on a value. So we could say if, let's say the last purchase days is greater than 300, then let's change the font to Verdana. So that needs to be in speech marks, else we'll leave it as Arial. And the reason it needs to be in speech marks is because it's a text string that feeds the typeface. X2, no errors found, save and close. Okay, and you can see that anything over 300 has a slightly different typeface. If you can spot Verdana, Arial for less than 300 and then back into Verdana for over, Arial for less than. The other condition is still having an effect on the color. 
So the blues and the reds are having an effect as well. So you could have multiple conditions. Now in reality, if you have too many, it just becomes too complicated. You need to have the right number of conditions that apply to your situation. So you might be using a key code for high purchasing customers, low purchasing customers, and you change them to a particular color based on their sales. That would be sensible, easy to follow, and great for people to understand. Now, what we've done here and here can be applied in the style. So you can go from a regular bold italic, etc. The typeface size, so you can change the font size. We can control different borders, different border colors, all by the same route. So anything with that X2 against it can have a condition that controls the value of the particular item in question. Whether it's border style, border color, font style, font color, typeface, etc.